this is such a great video, I love it. Hello everybody. Hey everybody. I just want to kind of show you what we feed the piggies on a daily basis. Um, this is just their like close up pen. We're working on getting them to maybe be able to pasture soon. Um, two of them are castrated barrels. The other two are intact boars. They are half uh, American guinea hog and half potbelly. I think that's a little bit debatable. I'm not really sure, but um, they seem like they're mostly American guinea hog. Here, I'll show you. Um, so they do have feed that we give them three to two, two to three scoops twice a day um, in the morning and in the evening. But it also just really depends on um, how much leftovers they get. And so also I'm going to show you kind of some of the stuff that we bring for them. And here you see I've got a bunch of stuff from the garden. Oh, there's a bug flew in there. Um, and then they love this. This is like their, one of their favorite treats. These are just corn husks from where I've cooked corn. And they, this is such a treat for them. They love it. Um, and they get they get scraps twice a day. So depending on how much scraps we give them, um, that's what they that's what they then that's how much. Anyways, depending on how much guys we give them, we'll give them either two or three scoops of feed. And they're really full because they've already had like four scoops today. So now they're just kind of like moseying around. Um, and then we also give them five to ten gallons of water, clean water each day. And then sometimes we throw some water in their little pit and in their play bucket. Um, so, so this is actually the thing that they get the most of. Um, and this is how we're actually able to feed them at way lower cost. The, this is milk. So there's kind of two options and I've got some different options here. Ooh. Got milk that is not spoiled, but has kind of um, started to have that weird smell. Some people say a lot with homesteading and having your family cow is that raw milk doesn't go bad, it just goes different. So when it starts to sour a little bit, it doesn't really smell like sour store milk. It more smells kind of like cheesy and it's still perfectly safe for consumption for people and animals. So what I like to do is any milk that's in the fridge that's starting to go a little bit sour, bring that to the pigs. And this is actually clabbered milk. So it started to solidify a little bit. It's on purpose been left out um, at like room temperature so that it can over a few days so they can start to, um, in essence, curdle. Um, the pigs love it. And we soak their feed in milk every day, probably two, three gallons of milk a day um, to soak their feed. And then we also give them what we have from the fridge. And honestly, it just cuts down so much on cost and they love it. <coughs> And there you go, one of their favorite meals. Look at that. You got a, a bowl of milk. They love it. So high in fat and protein. It's hydrating too. Man, they love it. You can see they've made a big mess in here too. So the things you don't want to feed to pigs are um, onions, any kind of meat or something that's touched meat. You also don't want to give them too much salt. Um, and the things that we feed them to really like bulk them up are number one raw milk. Any kind of milk product is really amazing. Um, we do give them their feed. Um, and I'll show that to you here. And then tons and tons of garden scraps and kitchen scraps. Um, also something to avoid is moldy food. Um, I think a lot of people think that pigs are like a garbage disposal, but that's not really true. They can't have stuff that's like things that would make you sick sick, they also can't have. So they're also sensitive to mold and um, food that's like straight up been spoiled. That's a no. 
but they do like stuff that we typically wouldn't eat um that's more like okay fruits and veggies that maybe bugs have gotten into or mm -hmm. Fruits and veggies that are like wilted and we wouldn't really find them palatable. Pigs will love that kind of stuff. So that's the kind of stuff we give them, but we definitely still stay away from things like, sorry, it's like so hot. We definitely stay away from things that are spoiled or moldy. We give them bread from discount stores when we can get it. Um, we know some people who work at a bread factory who give us a lot sometimes will bring that if some of it starts to go bad. Um, tons of garden scraps we even give them like branches and stuff out here um wild blackberries but they eat a they they do consume a lot of raw milk one because when we have extra we give to them and also if it just goes bad in the fridge they love it but that was kind of like our plan so when we first got the cow we almost immediately went on the search for pigs because we knew if we have any extra we need to find something that can eat it up um uh, well and they can help us kind of like deal with that that extra um, Not that we have too much extra, but what we do have extra we give them they probably drink up to I mean it depends on the day like today. This is uh, a gallon and a half that they have um, They'll get that twice a day. They might get up to four or five gallons a day Just depending on how much extra we have how much they have uh, how much our cow gave us that morning uh, when she had colostrum they uh, between the pigs and the chickens, that's like, I mean, that was what they ate every day. We call this their morning cereal because in the mornings, um, or at night, when, once we milk, when we were milking twice a day at night, we would take, um, uh, about a gallon of milk, put it in their feed and soak it overnight. And then, um, in the mornings we do the same thing and we just call it their morning and evening cereal, but they are really big fans, but they also just drink it straight, straight. You can see in that watermelon, I've just uh, put in some milk. And once they're done with their little grain, they'll probably just drink that straight out the watermelon rind. But they're really big fans. And we're really big fans of them. So they're putting on good weight, especially for American guinea hogs. I feel like they're doing pretty good. Um, since we've had them, we've probably had them for maybe three months and they are about four times the size that they were when we got them. I'm making a mess, but that's what pigs do. You can see they've done that all in here, but they love it. It's like there's a, there's four little pits, so it must be four, four pit, a pit for each one. A pit for each pig. But they love cream, they love raw milk. Two of them are castrated barrows and the other two are intact. Okay, so this is what the pigs get when we give them their feed. It is, you can see here, I don't know if you can read that, but it's 17% protein, 7% fat, 3.5% fiber. Um, we really like this place where we get feed from. They probably do 50 pounds to 100 pounds a week. It kind of just depends on what's going on and how much um, stuff they get. You can see this is something they get a lot too. Um, there's a lot of apples on these trees. Um, Abby and her husband, they have like tons. Oh, they have tons of apples out here. So um, if one looks like it's been spoiled by bugs or something, then we'll uh, take those. If one falls on the ground like this one, we will take that out there to them. Um, there's also some red apple trees down there. Um, uh, a lot of green apples, plums. From my house, we have tons of peaches. Um, a lot of these things are things that we're learning um, uh, as we go, uh, especially with the pigs. This is our first time having pigs. So uh, we're learning a lot. Um, we kind of just, we don't know how much we're supposed to be feeding them, but we just kind of go off of body condition. And so far they look pretty good um, with what we're doing. They're getting pretty big. At first they, I mean, they hardly ate any feed. They hardly ate any scraps. They would, you would still see it there sometimes, but now at the size they're at, um, whatever you put in there, they'll eat and it'll be gone within a matter of an hour or two. So, um, but we're enjoying them. Uh, we ate the first one. We have the four left, castrated two, which man, let me tell you that was, maybe I'll put a video up on here of us trying to catch them and do that. Yeah. Hopefully they're headed down with this.
Yeah. When you watch your kids play together and you're like, look at them playing so good together. You want to drink me, right? No. No, they won't. You can get one. They won't. They're just going to get away. I'll stay on the board, yeah. Woo! Woohoo! He did it! Grab the back legs. Hold it by the back legs. What do we do now? Hold it by. Hold it by the back legs. Okay. He is gone. You got it? You want to let go? No, I just got, he's muddy and wet. I'm going to drop him. Okay, I'm I don't know what to do. <laughs> Me either. Oh, it looks like he's on a spit. Like we're, all right, who's hungry? He cut his little nosy nose. Y'all come over here. Yes, they were older. Yes, I know that's controversial. Um, but otherwise, we were going to have to just um, kind of sacrifice those because... Uh, we can't, we're not at a financial place where we can risk board taint and not being able to use meat. So we have two that are castrated, two that are not. The two that are castrated honestly did super well, did not have any issues. Honestly, they, you could tell that they were in pain, but it wasn't terrible. We did use some numbing um, spray on them um, beforehand. So honestly, I don't think it was that, that bad. Um, and then second off, they healed really well, did not have any issues uh, with the wounds or infection or anything like that. We did use um, antiseptic. We used alcohol before we did it, and then afterward we put iodine um, on them. So uh, I think they did really well. And to be honest with you, the two that we that we castrated are actually the friendliest ones. I don't know if it's because there's no testosterone um, or what it is, but they're the only they're the two that actually come up to us when we bring food up. The big black one, white one, and then the the middle of the other two, not the blue eyed one and not the smallest, but the middle one of the brown ones. Um, and they're super friendly now and they'll come up i mean we don't really pet them and stuff because they're not pets um but um they're not like skittish as much as the other two the other two are very skittish and um, we've kind of thought about possibly keeping the blue-eyed one just because he looks really cool and he's a good size um to maybe keep and um maybe get a sow and breed and then that way we don't have to buy every time but the only thing is just that it's hard to it's hard to choose what breed because we didn't really want to go with American guinea hogs. Um, I don't know if you've seen our other videos, but we actually got these ones not for free, but we traded, uh, we bartered. Oh, what's that be? Bah! Sorry. We bartered some chickens, some meat chickens, and some milk and stuff for them. So um, it was kind of a no brainer at the time. Um, so they may end up just being like barbecue pigs because they're not going to get massive. Um, Look at butter, so pretty. I know, girl. She's in heat, so. She's letting us know she's here. She's single and ready to mingle. Um, she's getting bread in the morning. Uh, that video will be up tomorrow. Um, so anyways, so far what's working, the pig stuff is working for us, the feed that we're given and the scraps. Um, but honestly, you really don't know until we slaughter. Um, we need to give them at least six months because we just castrated. So they'll probably be like a year to a year and a half before we do that. So we'll see how big they get. Um, we want to put a lot of weight on them, but because they're part pot belly, we don't want to. We don't want to just put fat on them. We don't mind getting lard, but we do want to kind of get a little bit of meat on there too, so that it's um, worth the money for us. Um, so we'll let you know. You'll see those videos when they come out. I'm sure, but we've enjoyed having the pigs. They're super cute, um, and the pen they're in. We've had a time with that. They did actually get out for a while there. Um, we thought they were going forever, so that's when we got the other pig for free. <laughs> and then, like by the time she was slaughtered, they just came back. They were waiting right here at this fence, at this gate. They were just sitting there waiting for us to come. They probably realized it was too hard foraging for food. But, anyways, the only issue with them is that they don't have like um, a pasture yet. They don't have a lot of forage so um that's kind of tough and we kind of feel bad about that um, but that's why we try to supplement as much as possible it's not really about saving money it's more just about giving them a diverse diet with plenty of um, diet with plenty of forage and fiber so anyways if anybody has any tips please leave them in the comments um we're just learning we're just figuring out as we go so please let us know